Hello friends, it's Melissa with MelissaEsplin.com and Calligraphy.org. I thought I'd pop on here, do a little voiceover, explain the materials that I'm using, um, and just kind of what I'm doing in general. It was Mother's Day last weekend, and um, I designed these cards, the cards that you see on the left, they're color, a coloring card you can download in the link below the video, and they're just kind of fun to color. I watercolored the flowers and then I thought I would hit record as I wrote the names of family and friends on these envelopes. So a little bit about the materials that I'm using. I'm using a vintage nib that functions very similarly to the Nico and Zebra G nibs. So if you want to get that really crisp uh, hairline with nice minimalistic shades, the Nico or Zebra G nibs are a really great um, resource to go to. As far as the ink goes, I'm using the Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White that's been highly diluted. Um, you can come across some issues with Bleed Proof White. If you dilute it too much, it will like crack and come off the paper, but I'm okay with running that risk because it is so opaque um, pretty much no matter how much I dilute the pigment. So I, I'm, I'm okay with that. There are plenty of other whites out there, but this is the one that I really prefer over any other one. The holder that I'm using is a custom holder by Huang Dao. I picked it up as a treat to myself after the 2017 International Conference in Utah um, called Letterworks. And it's made of deer antler and ebony and I like it a lot because I live in the mountains I see deer all the time this is from a deer shed so it, it kind of hit close to home a little bit about my own personality and where I picked it up I picked it up in Utah I mean Huang is from Vietnam but I I really felt this sort of cosmic connection to the pen holder I don't think you need to spend lots of money on pen holders if you're just starting out Get yourself one of those cheap speedball holders. They're like $3. You can pick one up with those up. And then as you get more practice under your belt, reward yourself with a custom holder from an artisan of your choice. Um, you see the flourish I just did there. It kind of came off a little bit flat. But I figured my sister knows that I don't love her any less because my flourish came off a little weird. Now, if I were doing this for a client, I'd probably chuck the envelope and start over again. But perfection isn't necessarily the purpose in this activity today. The envelopes that I'm using are Fuchsia from Poptone, I believe. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Uh, their, Poptone is a great brand. I get asked what brands are good for envelopes. And to be honest, there are a lot of great paper brands for adjusting envelopes. And what it boils down to, what I have found personally, is you get what you pay for. So if you're spending $5 on 200 envelopes, it's likely they're garbage. They've cut corners in making those envelopes, and you're kind of gambling pretty big there if you're going to buy those envelopes. Sometimes those gambles pay off. I'm not saying don't do that, but just be warned. I have found great luck at envelopes.com or, or envelopes and paper presentation and paper source. Those are kind of the three go-tos. I have a local place, Pack and Wrap, on State Street and 9330 South in Utah, if you're in the Utah area, that um, carry great envelopes as well. So it really just depends. And again, you get what you pay for. So if you are not sure, go for the highest quality one and you should be good. I tend to go for a smooth finish. I made the mistake once of going for a felt finish for a client. I suggested it and that was a very big mistake because it took forever and my hairlines looked like garbage. The client didn't care, she loved it. But for me, it was a big fight uh, against the materials. So I wouldn't recommend getting anything in a felt finish. Crane Letra is, if you're not aware of this already, 
is the calligrapher's nightmare when it comes to envelopes. It is the one exception where money does not buy you what you need for calligraphy. It is a very high quality paper, but the fibers are very loose, perfect for letterpress, but it is not very good on nibs. You'll go through a lot of nibs trying to address on crane letra. And oftentimes calligraphers will charge extra if you give them crane letra envelopes or or outright refuse the job. So anyway, just some random babblings, but, uh, these are just, I don't know. I thought I'd record and see if you'd like it. This is all done in real time. So you can see how fast or slow I am at writing these out. Um, and when it comes to lettering these, I, these are for friends. They're not for clients. So I'm not writing out guidelines. I'm just winging it. I'm hoping that my spacing is okay and we'll see towards the end. I've decided not to edit out a couple of mistakes that I made. Um, so you'll see a wonky letter here or a wonky flourish there. And I just figured I'd keep those up here and not edit them out of the video simply to show you the, the realness of doing calligraphy and not measuring or penciling it out beforehand. Now, if you would have seen, if, if you would have seen me do this freehand, say 10 years ago, I'd get a very different result. It wouldn't look very good. I've been practicing with guidelines for a long time. So there's muscle memory that's been built in and I can sort of estimate decently well my the spacing that I'll need so I don't usually get a pencil unless I absolutely have to now you'll notice this is where I've messed up I completely lost track of my spacing here so I'm gonna get another one I'm gonna mess this one up too just a spoiler alert I'm gonna mess this one up too in fact that that is really the risk that you run when you don't pencil things out you may go through more envelopes i have plenty of envelopes to spare and i really just i was feeling oddly lazy so this is just what we got i gave myself a little bit of room a little bit more room right at the start and i'm condensing my letters just a little bit more so that i can fit franziani in there just a little bit better. Um, but as I finish up, I'm thinking, oh, she doesn't have any descenders or ascenders in her name. And so I'm thinking I should probably do some flourishes below the name and get kind of fancy with it. So I decide to do this flourish off with the E and it looks out of balance. So I rotate my paper. Well, I finish off the F so that it kind of comes off the page a bit. But this, I didn't rotate the paper like I should have. So then you see how wonky it is. And I just, at that point, was like, uh, I'm going to redo it. Like I didn't, I didn't redo Emily. You can see I didn't do that one. But I redid Franciani for a third time just because I wanted to get it right. And so we get it right, finally. Or we get it good enough this time. It certainly has its issues. But um, that's just one of the things that you run the risk of if you don't pencil things out. So if you learn anything from this video, it is use a pencil unless you feel totally okay with messing it up right on the very last stroke. So anyway, thank you so much for watching and listening to me ramble on and on about calligraphy. If you'd like to learn about how to do calligraphy, how to master it, how to develop your own style, definitely check out my classes online at store.calligraphy.org. I teach with personal feedback, 
So you're not feeling like you're left alone and having to figure out everything with all this content. I walk you through all the content step by step. Thanks so much for watching and take care.